Hi, this is Baltimore Weekly, episode 21, GBTC's weekly roundup of interesting people, places, and things here in the great city and region of greater Baltimore. Um, my name is Andrew Hazlett, and I've uh, been working here at GBTC for some time, and this is our uh, opportunity to talk to people in the community doing interesting things and share with you some news about upcoming events. My uh, usual co-host, Sharon Paley, is out uh, convalescing from uh, 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 surgery that went very well. So uh, I'm sure uh, you all will join me in extending our, our fond uh, best wishes for a rapid recovery to Sharon. And uh, I, I will not attempt to keep up with the, the sarcasm and um, cutting remarks that you have all come to expect from Sharon, but you'll see those again soon. Today, uh, I'll be in a moment going into a list of really exciting upcoming things. But first, uh, we wanted to reach back into the mists of time about a week and a half ago and uh, hear about how uh, a very important and cool event unfolded here, and that is Baltimore Startup Weekend. And I'm joined uh, this afternoon by, um, by our friend Sarge Salman, who is one of the organizers, along with Nick Miller and Mike Brenner, of Baltimore Startup Weekend. Sarge, thanks for joining us. Hey, Andrew, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. So, um, what is Startup Weekend? It's not something that started here in Baltimore, right? That's correct, it's not. Actually, Startup Weekend is a program that was started by the Kauffman Foundation. And the Kauffman Foundation is a very important organization in America. They've spent a lot of resources uh, studying entrepreneurship, but also promoting it as well. And it started off as a small project, has been ultimately spun off as its own uh, nonprofit. And basically, you know, you can read all the books you want in entrepreneurship, you can watch all the movies, but until you go through it, uh, you really have no sense of, of what it's like. And this is really what Startup Weekend is all about. It's 54 hours, begins on you know Friday evening, and ends on Sunday evening. And we bring in together uh, a mix of developers, designers, and non-technical folks, and put them together, uh, and with the support of coaches. Uh, and facilitators and our judges to go through the weekend to see what it's like when, you know, a lot of people saying, oh, I have this idea. But Startup Weekend is really about what happens next. Once I have that idea, what is the next thing that must happen? Well, um, and, and that's really what it's about. And I think some of the lessons uh, people learn is, you know, you cannot do it alone. One person cannot do it. It takes all sorts of skill sets. Uh, because as you know, most startups fail. They don't fail for technical reasons. They fail for non-technical reasons. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, and to see what it takes, how hard it actually is. Uh, but it's really, it's, it's, it's an awesome experience uh, for everyone involved, and we're just delighted that we're able, you know, given an opportunity to put such an event together. Yeah, so um, where was the event held? Um, it was uh, on held this at, most recent occasion. At, yeah, at uh, AOL, advertising.com. It's a great, great location mm -hmm. downtown at Tide Point. Uh, and Paris Pittman, who's really our contact with, with that company, just, you know, just was outstanding in her support and, and making the room available to us, uh, as well as some couple of volunteers from AOL. It's just a great venue, massive, massive places, so you can have teams. I mean, you, you, some teams practically moved in. Uh, you know, a couple of designers brought in their big IMAX, and uh, so oh, nice. uh, it was just a great, great location. So how long, uh, uh, well, how many teams, uh, or first of all, how many people pitched ideas on the first night of Startup you know, Weekend? I, uh, let, you, let me give you some of the stats uh, that I looked up. Uh, so in terms, of, in terms of total participants, in terms of developer, designers, and non-technicals, we counted uh, 76. Uh, we had 33 developers, uh, 11 designers, and 30 non-technicals. Uh, so that's about 45% developers, 15% designers, and 41% non-technicals. I don't have the count of how many people pitch. We certainly encourage most everyone to pitch, but uh, uh, there were 15 final presentations. Uh, but to tell you, we had participants from Maryland, New Jersey, Virginia, as far south as North Carolina, and as far north as Connecticut. And of course, six judges and coaches. Uh, and what really our role as organizers was making sure that all the attendees had an awesome experience. And that means uh, also bringing in the coaches. When I went out, one of the things that I focused on uh, for Startup Weekend was the customer development. Uh, this is about you know making sure we uh, people know about the event and, and recruiting them to join us for the weekend. Uh, sent out 115 emails. Uh, attended three pizza parties: Hopkins, uh, <laughs> Mike Towson, uh, including. I reached out to 13 academic institutions. Uh, put up flyers, and that way, uh, you know, make sure we have a diverse mix uh, of attendees. 
Uh, and so our role was, was the value, I think, of, of such an event was, one, it's about learning. Because the attendees are going to learn how to apply the skills they already know, and they're going to learn about some skills that they don't know about, that, you know, working together towards an objective of delivering a prototype. It's also about making connections, uh, including with, you know, the team members uh, that they're going to be working on, which usually they do not know. But also, and this is something I certainly stress to the students that are going to be entering the workforce soon, is connections with the coaches that we recruited for them and the judges. So it's really just a, you know, it's a, it's a rich opportunity uh, for that. And it's to get a chance to build something and launch a company, perhaps, and ultimately join a worldwide community of, of, of Startup Weekend uh, alums. And what's really, I think, attractive to me as an organizer about Startup Weekend is that it is just such a professional and well-packaged you know, uh, program for, for anyone to put together all over the world in all sorts of diff different languages. So it's really it's an awesome, awesome international organization, uh, and we've just been very happy to be able to be affiliated with them. Yeah, well, and um, in addition to learning, and people you know, form real businesses that can potentially take off, right? I'm mean, I'm thinking of the of Nick Miller's uh, parking well, panda yeah. example, right? Yeah, you know, and as I and as I told him on the first night, is if I were present at the at the prior startup weekend, which I which I wasn't, you know, if I heard someone pitch the idea of renting out their driveway for some extra money when they're not using it, I would have laughed. <laughs> but you know, it goes to show you that this is not it's not. Ideas are really a dime a dozen, and a lot of people have ideas, but ultimately it's in the execution, and that's really what it's about. And what we hope is that the attendees, when they go through this weekend, realize that it is hard. Uh, you know, the first thing you have to do is you have to validate who your customers are, and you have to validate what problems your customers have, and, and then look at the solution. And so this is not easy. Uh, it is hard, but, uh, but it's worth it. Uh, but certainly, but you, know, you don't have to take my word for it, Andrew. Uh, I put up a bunch of, uh, on the... YouTube page of the Baltimore Lean Startup, uh, some testimonials. I mean, I just walked around on, the, on Sunday, asked the attendees what, what they learned. And you can just watch the YouTube videos yourself and, and see what people have said. And some of the Ooh. people on there you'll see, there's AJ, who's uh, on the faculty at Howard. He teaches computer science. He had very interesting things to say. Uh, there's Laura, who's an attorney. Uh, had, had good comments. Uh, there's Jen, who works at Booz. She, she, she works in process and, and had great insight. And, and there's a third year medical student from the University of Maryland. Uh, so it's just, I think, watching those at the end, you know, made us feel that, you know, that all this hard work was really worthwhile. Because uh, this really was an awesome experience. And furthermore, the judges, Mike Sabelski, who was one of our judges, uh, who kind of agreed to participate. You know, Mike is out and about in the community. He's everywhere. He walked in and said, boy, there are a lot of new faces here I don't recognize. And I thought, good. That's really then, good, uh, yeah. And Yair Flicker of uh, Smart Logic, uh, he made the same comment, too. So I think, in that sense, we succeeded. Uh, in our outreach to bring in people that it's not the same old, same old uh, group that, that, that gathers, but in fact, we brought in, we, you know, I hope that we augmented and enriched our community locally. And this is, of course, just the beginning. And, uh, right, right. Well, so what are, um, can you uh, give examples of, uh, of um, I guess you can tell us who, who won and um, also you know, maybe what, uh, what kinds of, uh, uh, ideas kind of bubbled up in the course of the weekend. Um, are there? Um, do you expect to see any of these companies, um, you know, continuing applying to accelerators, getting funding, or you know, just going into business in, sure. in the coming uh, months? The, the team that won uh, didn't develop a prototype. Actually, they they developed a, a full product, and it's just simply a way for companies to to manage passwords for. Uh, password access for, for the various companies. And they really did an outstanding job. But, but I think it's, it's very easy to focus on the winner. But I'd like to focus on the 14 other uh, teams that did not win and see what they got out of it. Uh, and Because and ultimately, I think that's how we judge. You should judge the, the process. Is, is, uh, it's, it's about the people that do not win. What did they get out of it? Uh, and, you know, and the ideas range from uh, a tool to an app to teach children uh, how, to, how to calculate money and, and the concept of finance. To, to apps for self-guided tours, uh, really ran the gamut. Uh, and it's just there's no, you know, we don't place any limits on what ideas people can pitch. In fact, they can pitch anything they want. Uh, ultimately, the main purpose of this is about learning. Uh, and for all the, you know, the serial entrepreneurs out there, everyone knows startup companies, uh, are, it's, very, it's very hard and it's a high-risk undertaking. So chances are you are going to fail. But what matters is, is, is the next one you do. And so this is about, you know, applying what you learn and moving on. Uh, so in that sense, uh, what I think I find very heartening is I know that the people, the other 14 teams, uh, suddenly started, you know, I've seen, seen them join the, the Baltimore Tech Group on Facebook. They started joining some of our meetups. And, uh, so so that's, that's, that's a good sign is that, you know, that the engagement has just begun and then things will continue. 
And, and that's ultimately, I think, what the community, our role ought to be, is, is to facilitate that process. Because if, if they succeed, I think we succeed. But if they fail, we cannot succeed. Hmm. That's a good point. Um, and and the uh, overall, you know, there's been this um, uh, growing community in Baltimore of um, tech-oriented entrepreneurs who are finding one another. But it's very easy to, you know, once you've got like a Facebook group set up, to think, oh, well, this is everybody. But no, I mean, as you've proved, there's there are all there are so many new faces to bring in, so many people who aren't aware of this growing scene. Um, so, you know, hats off to, to you guys for, for broadening that and um, in planning the flag. Um, oh, you know, you know, so I really, honestly, Andrew, I don't think, I don't view it, we're really not planning a flag. We're just continuing the effort started by others. And, and certainly GBTC has taken a leadership role in that sense. But we live in a metropolis of, what, two and a half million people? Uh, that, that's how, you know, like I said, I sent out 115 emails and you know, the pizza party said, but you have to do those things. Otherwise, uh, you know, I think community weathers and, and uh, so, but I think this was just, to, to me, it was just it's a, it's a no-brainer. That's, that's what we have to do, because otherwise it's going to be the same old, same old. And to add to that, you know, I'm a chemist by training. I don't code. So the coding community is, is not my natural habitat, even though a lot of my dear friends are coders. Uh, so, but like, you know, it, it really takes all kinds. It takes all kinds and, and everyone to step up uh, to support the community. That's, that's a really interesting point, that, that you don't have to be, um, you know, a... Uh, uh, Python ninja, if there is such a thing, uh, to uh, to make a contribution. Right, and, and Ruby on Rails. What? what I don't Ruby even know what Rails, that means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael explained it to me. <laughs> but, uh, well, but but, yeah. but but you 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 become more familiar with it, you know, by you know immersing yourself in a long weekend of um, of executing something. You start to get a sense for what you know coders can and cannot do, and that's that's another cool element of this. You know, I think one so, of the things I learned, if you look at the, our, the YouTube videos, uh, I talked to AJ, and he's uh, lesson learned number five, and he says in there, point blank says, I'm a coder, uh, and I, my instinct is to write code, and I come here, you learn that, no, 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 that's not the first thing you do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is really a, an enlightening, it's an awesome experience for the attendees, uh, but I, I told everyone is, you know, they learned a great deal, but I learned 15 times more, because I went around, you know, with 15 teams, and, and so, I learned a great deal, and I certainly, I think my coaching skills have improved, and it's, it's uh, the attendees were really awesome. They, you know, we were there to learn together and, and execute together and kind of, and, and, and watch them grow. That, that was really delightful. Extremely cool. So tell, tell us a little bit more about, um, about yourself and the other organizers. Uh, what, what all did you, uh, did you guys uh, uh, find compelling about this, and, and you know, what, what else do you, uh, do you guys do? Well, so, so Mike Brenner uh, is, is one of the co-founders of Betamore, which is uh, a space that should be open up, opening up soon in Baltimore. And, and it's, a, it's a great space. It's for co-working, for learning. Uh, I think they'll have some kind of accelerator program. And I'm looking forward to, to that opening. It's at betamore.com. Nick Miller, of course, of Parking Panda, uh, you know, is, well, that speaks for itself. Is, that company has is, is, is grown since, I mean, my understanding is he went to Startup Weekend last year on a whim. He already he had a job. And then, and after winning it, I uh, decided to quit a job and pursue it. Uh, Parking Panda is, you know, launched in Baltimore, D.C., and they recently got written up in TechCrunch. They launched in San Francisco. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just, we're all very happy for success and look forward to, to following the adventures of Panda. Uh, me, like I said, I'm the chemist in the group. <laughs> I don't have any, any computer background. But uh, I run the Baltimore Lean Startup Group. And, and Lean Startup it seeks to address one fundamental question for uh, startups. Are you building something that somebody will buy? Because most startups fail, and they fail for one reason of no customers. They don't fail, you know, for technical reasons. Uh, and so, uh, and Lean Startup, very simply, the way I explain it to my parents is, it's, it's, uh, it's about running the simplest experiments to quickly validate business assumptions. Okay, so before, uh, you know, all, all entrepreneurs have these great visions, idea of a big product, bells and whistles, but before you spend, spend a lot of money started building it, and then getting the market from that nobody wants to buy it, is you, know, you can run experiments to, to validate your assumptions about the customers, uh, their problems, and you know, what solution they're looking for. And this is really what uh, Lean Startup is all about. Uh, and one of our motto, uh, my core organizer's name is Casey Corcoran. He works at uh, General Dynamics and Healthcare IT. Our motto is uh, going where no lean has gone before. Uh, we are very happy servicing our coding friends, that community. But uh, you know, we seek to reach out to other silos 
uh, that could, I think, benefit from methodology. So we have metrics such as, in addition to uh, using four different venues around Baltimore, uh, I have to bring in speakers from 12 different industry sectors and recruit members from 12 different industry sectors. Um, so, so that's what, like I said, for me, doing the customer development, that's, that's what I enjoy doing. And, uh, and so I, I really enjoy contributing that part to, to Startup Weekend. Um, and yeah, people the, are... The visit. human chemistry, if you will. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and so yeah. I, I really... Business have, card, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if people are interested, they can certainly Google Baltimore Lean Startup. Um, and so, that, so if you ask, you know, why do people uh, participate and, and become organizers? Uh, we're not getting paid. Uh, you know, there, there's no limousine. There are no groupies. Uh, but in fact, you know, we are all of this community. Uh, and I think Mike, Nick, and I agree that, you know, we, we have a vested interest in the success of the community. Uh, and so this is really why we did it. Uh, and for me, I mean, it's just, it's natural. Uh, it's just part of my, what I've been doing and, and, and Mike and Nick as well. Uh, and so, you know, so my next meetup, as it happens, is on October 30th. And the theme is, uh, the title is, resources for entrepreneurs and startups. And, and, and so it kind of flows, and I, I expect to see some of the folks who started up at Startup Week in Baltimore to, to show up uh, and to give you just some idea of who's going to be presenting. Uh, I'm, I'm dedicating almost half of the program to, to organizations and programs that support women entrepreneurs. So Chris Appel is going to be there talking about the Activate program. Uh, Julie Lenza kirk she was the co-chair of Startup Maryland, is going to be there. Uh, Greg Cangulosi, of course, the co-founder of the Baltimore Angels, is going to be talking about funding. Uh, and, and finally, Clay Hickson, who's the president of the Maryland Business uh, Incubation Association, is going to be there to, to, to share with us, you know, what the different incubation programs around town. And so, so that's kind of that's uh, that's kind of my interest is, is supporting local entrepreneurship uh, and and helping them succeed. That that's amazing. It's a great lineup you've got there for October thirtieth, and uh, you know we we um, at GBTC aspire to a lean approach to a nonprofit organization. So uh, um, I need to make sure I, I darken darken your doors um, uh, very hey, soon. Man, all you have to do is, is I I can't do this alone. You have an idea for a theme? Just call me up, send me an email. We'll work together. I mean, I don't want to do anything alone. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I try to collaborate on everything with, with other people. It's more fun. You learn more. And it's, it's again, one person cannot do these things. As you, you guys at GPTC certainly know. Uh, and so if uh, otherwise it doesn't matter. It's, it's not about just me getting it done. And it's, it's about the community involvement. And, and that's what makes it so much fun. Um, it's hard work, but, but it's worth it. But you have to put in the hard work. You know, this takes time, building communities and, and, and connections. And, and ultimately, you have to serve your community. If they're not interested, that means you're not serving them what they want. And, mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. And then, about. Uh, yeah. But, but ultimately, that's going to um, redound to everybody's benefit. And, you know, um, we all have kind of a, a collective self interest in promoting that community. And it'll make it a lot easier for all of us to get. The, the things we want to do done so that's that's really cool and uh, yeah that's an inspirational note on which to um, to thank you for appearing on Baltimore Weekly and uh, I'm gonna shift in a, in a moment to our, um, our regular Baltimore event Baltimore Lean Startup you can google it <laughs> yeah Baltimore Lean Startup easier yeah. to google than um, okay. it's, it's a meetup right yes on meetup.com meetup. okay yeah or you can search on meetup.com but thanks so much Sarge and uh, we will see you around okay take care thank you all right Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. All right, well, guys, that um, another another cool interview with somebody doing cool things in Baltimore is uh, always fun to do. Um, now I'm just going to turn uh, briefly to uh, some of the the usual flood of oncoming events. Let's take a little sip from the fire hose, if we will, of uh, the uh, community calendar that that we maintain at go.gb.tc. And uh, let's take a look. So um, tonight, Wednesday, October 10th, the Baltimore Drupal meetup is happening at Bertha's Restaurant. Always worth checking out if you are into that particular open source CMS. Also, the uh, Baltimore UX Book Club um, is talking about clout, the art and science of influential web content. And that's at the offices of the Burnt Group on Falls Road. Um, Going into uh, Thursday, we have uh, the change party being thrown by the local uh, social enterprise startup GiveCore. Um, you can find out the details about this wonderful celebration. For many of you, all that you'll need to be convinced to attend is that food and drink will be provided by Woodbury Kitchen. 
Uh, also, I, I should mention Thursday morning is the Columbia edition of uh, Ron Schmelzer's Tech Breakfast. And some of the companies presenting there um, down at the Loyola Columbia campus are Vi Network, Magpie, and Money Pinchers. Um, and I think there, there will be, you know, well over 100 uh, Howard County Columbian folks um, talking about startups. Um, skipping ahead a little bit to um, uh, this, uh, to next week, um, it's a big week in, highlighted uh, by Thursday's Ignite Baltimore 11 being held at the Maryland Institute College of Art Brown Center, and um, that you know is always a great uh, party and event. Sixteen amazing Baltimoreans will speak about their uh, favorite subjects on which they're most passionate for five minutes with sixteen slides advancing automatically. The adrenaline is palpable, and uh, you'll learn a lot and meet a lot of interesting people. Uh, I should mention also on uh, Tuesday the 16th is an interesting little thing in the morning, um, the Baltimore Hardware Design Engineers Breakfast. That's at 8 a.m. in Pikesville, and uh, definitely worth checking out. That's a, a growing and important community, and uh, there's some really smart people involved in that particular group. Um, I should mention also the, the 16th is um, the... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is another important one that I, that I uh, started to overlook, which is the Baltimore Mobile Meetup, which is happening at the um, wonderful space of AOLAdvertising.com that Sarge talked about as the host of Startup Week in Baltimore. They're, the Baltimore Mobile Meetup is going to be there. At, the headliners are our uh, are good friends at Friends of the Web. Um, they're going to be talking about their experiences with the wildly and unexpectedly successful Jittergram app. Also, their other iOS app, WikiWeb. And there's some really smart guys with uh, some uh, wonderful design sense and um, a really interesting approach to building products. So that, that promises to be a, a particularly illuminating Baltimore mobile uh, meetup. I should mention also that October 16th is... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is the day that uh, we, uh, we honor um, uh, the uh, uh, women engineers and um, technologists. And um, I'm just pulling up the link here, just so you know why I am pausing. Um, look for finding... Oh, sorry. Well, if you go to um, findingada.com or the Twitter account Finding Ada, you'll read about um, the global observances of Ada Lovelace Day. Ada Lovelace is considered the first computer programmer, and she's actually a relative of Lord Byron, the poet, um, which should give you a hint. Uh, she lived in the early 19th century, and wrote the first program used on Babbage's Difference Engine, I think it was called, which is really considered by many to be the first computer. So she was a, a brilliant mathematician and um, uh, uh, technologist in an era, you know, before, you know, computers really existed. So it's, it's very cool that um, there is this long tradition of women technologists that are being honored. So look for events all over the world that you can follow along. Just go to findingada.com. Uh, that's it for this week. Um, our big news at GBTC is uh, November 1st, fast approaching, is the new uh, reconfigured, rejuvenated tech night. It takes place at the Lexington Market Atrium on the evening of Thursday, November 1st. Look for some amazing new awards that will be distributing to some of the most interesting people in our community. Look for uh, terrific food and drink provided by Baltimore uh, merchants and um, uh, 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 food stalls. Um, and uh, just, uh, it's we can promise it's going to be a fun and interesting time. Uh, after party at the Alewife um, bar down the street. 
and uh, a chance to really shine a light um, on some very old forms of commerce um, with some very new forms of commerce and technology. So do join us. The he other headline is that in contrast to previous years, uh, this year's Tech Night costs a mere $40 to attend. Um, which is a bit of a, a little bit more accessible than the past uh, ticket price, which uh, was around $180. So we hope to see a really broad and interesting group of people there. So thank you so much for your attention, and uh, um, promise we'll be uh, back on a more uh, regular basis, hopefully with my uh, my lovely co-host next week. Um, Again, you can uh, find out more about cool things happening in our community by going to our community calendar at go.gb.tc. If you have questions about that or this program or anything else, feel free to write us at ask at gb.tc. And again, I'm Andrew Hazlett. You can reach me at a at gb.tc. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you on the ether next week. Take care.